Hi, and thanks so much for joining me. Today we are ranking the foundations that I recently picked up. The month of January included a lot of products from palettes to foundations to cheek products, lip products, you name it. But a lot of foundations came out and those don't seem to come out as often as other products. I thought I would go ahead and rank them for you. I've got Dior, Charlotte Tilbury, Chanel. I've got five of them and we'll go backwards. Let me just say they're all really nice. So we're talking about a very slim margin. All of these are lovely. I think skin type has a lot to do with it. And I'm also going to mention if these are good for dry, oily, or combo skin. I have combo skin, so I kind of get to test it out for everybody because I've got oily right here. I've got dry here, so I can see texture when it is settling in. I can see when things start to fall apart here. So starting with the fifth one, again, it's a very lovely one. I really liked it, but just in terms of ranking, I had to pick something to go last. So I picked the Forever Dior Foundation in 3W. This looked lovely on the skin. This is a transfer proof 24 hour foundation, high perfection. It's not transfer proof, it's transfer resistant. I did a wear test, I wore it with a face covering. It evened out my skin, it looked really lovely for many hours, except for when it did start to fall apart. Um, it didn't stay for 24 hours. Not that I wore it for 24 hours, but I wore it for about 12, 13 hours, something like that. And if it didn't last that long, it's not gonna last 24 hours. This is one of the foundations that's more suited towards oily skin types, but as you can see, if you watched that video, the wear test, you could see that it did fall apart there. So if you're oily, it's still probably going to fall apart on you. Um, not as much as some of the other ones, but just know that it didn't stay in place as long as 24 hours. Then for the Charlotte's Beautiful Skin Foundation, this one I think is suited more for combination skin because it has a hydration about it, but also does dry down. Um, it is a little bit thicker though, which is one of the reasons it's lower because I personally prefer a more lightweight foundation, something that isn't this thick. I know you can sheer it out, but it's just something I noticed about it. There is a, not a stickiness, but a viscosity about it that makes it feel a little bit less lightweight than I want it to be, but it's very nice as well. Very nice foundation. It does the job. Then this one is number three. This is the Forever Skin Glow by Dior. And this one surprised me because I thought it was going to be really dewy on my face, but it's not. Like I'm just feeling it right now. And it's more lightweight than say the Charlotte Tilbury. And I think that's one of the reasons why I prefer it to the Charlotte Til Tilbury because it feels more comfortable to me than the Charlotte Tilbury. And it looked really beautiful on my combo skin. It wore it nicely over many hours. It actually looked better on my skin after a few more hours. So that was impressive. I would love to have a tone that's a little bit closer. It was a little bit cool for me. I think that combo skin, you actually might do well with this. If you're oily though, you might wanna try this other one, the Forever, because it dries down. Um, more than this one does, but this did dry down quite nicely. So combination skin, give it a try. Watch the areas where you are oily though. Um, but like I said, it didn't really fall apart like I thought it would. It looked really lovely, felt very comfortable. Dry skin types, I think you might like this, except the only thing I would caution is that if it did well on me and I have combo skin, I'm not quite sure how dry, dry skin would like it. Um, it looked pretty on the outside where I have more dry skin as well. Then this one is higher up than maybe some of you expected it to be. It's the number one de Chanel. I love the way this feels. It's so lightweight, but you've got to like lightweight foundations. Yeah, it's very fluid here. It's got a nice slip to it. It's more sheer. I have to use concealer, although I use concealer with all of these. You can build them up, I tried, but I just get more texture. It's easier to go in with a concealer. It does the job and it doesn't build texture. So that's why I will go in with a concealer versus building up the foundation. But as for this, it works really well if my skin isn't overly prepped with moisturizers, serums, etc. It's when it's highly, highly prepped that this doesn't do as well. But I did use this on my mom. She has dry skin and I use this 
when I didn't add any moisturizer, I just toned one in with this. Or if my skin's dry like today, my skin is dry, it's really lovely. So it has a blurring, perfecting effect on it. Yeah, I really enjoy using this. It's the foundation I would choose if I had more even skin tone, especially on the front. I really like the way that it feels. I will wear that, but I have to prep a little bit differently to wear this. So if you are oily, I would skip on this one because this one will move around on you if you already have lots of things in terms of hydration on your face. But if you have drier skin, you will really like this. If you have combo skin, just I caution you to not put so much moisturizer moisturizer on. If you have this, it works a lot better with just a very lightweight moisturizer. So this is lovely for if you have dry skin as well as if you have combo skin, but you don't overly prep the skin with excessive hydration. So that really impacts the way that foundation behaves on my skin from no to little to a lot of moisturizer. It behaves differently. And I actually have it on now on the exterior because my skin's kind of dry today on the exterior. So I was able to actually put a couple of foundations on today. Okay. So my number one foundation, and it's not as new as these, but it's still new on the site. I think it came out in the summer, is the Chanel Ultra Le Ton. And this is the All Day Comfort Flawless Finish Foundation. This is the one they recently reformulated. I didn't try the previous version, so I'm unable to compare it for you. But what I noticed with this is that it looks so lovely on the skin. It dries down really well for combo skin, and it's really comfortable and looks wonderful for a very long time. It looks beautiful on camera. When I was editing the video where I used it, I kept thinking, what is that foundation I used? It was this one. So this is a really beautiful one. It helps that it is in my shade BD41. Um, by the way, this number one de Chanel is in BD41. I will list everything below if I forgot to say what shades they are. But this is really impressive because it stays in place, at least in this climate right now where it's a little bit cooler, stays in place. It looks beautiful. It looks like perfected skin without looking like foundation, although it's more of a traditional foundation than say this product. This behaves more like a skin tint to me than this, which is a foundation. So this is a true foundation. So let me just look at this again because I have it on now. Yeah, it doesn't crease. It doesn't collect anywhere. It looks beautiful on the skin. It has a bit of a glow to it, but not in terms of the texture. It really does just make your skin look so, so pretty. So if you have combo skin and you're looking for a product that will do well on your oilier and your drier areas, I would go in with this. So this performed well on those oily areas as well as my more normal skin. Not quite sure about dry skin on this though. So if you have dry skin, let us know what you know about this product, but I'm really impressed with it so far. And I noticed right away too when I put this on my face that it felt really comfortable. It dried down really beautifully and the result looks just lovely on the skin. It, so it looks perfected, but it didn't take me a whole lot of time. Of course, I go in with my Shiseido brush that I love, which makes every foundation better. Very pleased with how it looks on camera, in the mirror, after many, many hours of wear. That is my current ranking for the foundations that I recently picked up. Of course, I will continue to test them, but as it stands, that is my ranking. And I'll let you know if the order changes at all, the more I test these products because I am constantly testing them. Even if I'm not using them on camera, I am testing them behind the scenes. And sometimes something emerges as like, oh, I figured out how best to use this product or how to set it or something about it that makes it work really well. So that's my initial assessment of these. But like I said, that's always subject to change based on more and more experience. But let me know if you have these foundations. I'd love to know what your thoughts are on these foundations, what your skin type is, because I think that has a big impact on how these perform because yeah, I know that some people who love the products that I don't love have different skin types. So please let us know in the comments section below. But that is it for today's video, so please take care of each other. Stay well if you enjoyed this video. If you learned something, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you next time.